it's hard, right? And I'm not gonna like sugarcoat it. I get really emotional because it's like constantly fighting for so little sometimes. Getting home later that day and my dad telling us, well, they're gonna deport me um, or they're gonna keep me in jail for a really long time. So we have to make a decision as a family to leave. They were intentionally sitting somewhere thinking about how do we hurt these people? How do we make their lives so miserable that they leave on their own? Those people, like those stories, keep you going because there is no room to stop. There's no room, it's like real lives. When SB 1070 was being debated, I was watching it on TV, and it clicked right that it didn't matter that I was a good immigrant or that I was a good student, that you know had been kept my head down for several years. It didn't matter all these good things that we were doing because someone here didn't want us, and there was a lot that was being pushed, and it was going to separate our families. We were going to have a vigil at the Arizona State Capitol in response to. Um, this horrible bill that was going to criminalize our families. And in that really dark moment in Arizona's history uh, of SB 1070, people started coming together. We made that shift. We decided that the only way we we're gonna survive is to organize our communities and defend ourselves. What was a symbol of fear became a joyous rebellion because that fear turned into a fight. The country, the world was looking at Arizona um, and we fought back. And this amazing idea of the One Arizona Coalition formed. Right then and there, I knew that we could go out and march and we could have actions. But if we didn't build political power, we're not going to change the broken immigration system. We're not going to change that bad legislation. And, you know, we are not going to be able to change that many hearts and minds. What we found is that people are worried about how to put foot on the table every day. They're worried about safety. They're worried about all these things that they didn't see the connection between their everyday struggle for survival to pol the political process. The demographics of this country are shifting. We need our people to be ready. Every single year, every time that we're knocking on doors that we're registering people to vote, it's building, it's building, it's building. Year after year, we've been able to, one, build the political power continuously through the votes, but two, be able to build the capacity and power through new leadership. Since 2010, we have been able to register 100,000 people, and what was considered low-efficacy voters are now your high-frequency voters, and we have started to see a lot of changes already. We're transforming school boards, we're transforming city councils. All the things that we dreamed about are things that are finally, you know, five years later, starting to become a reality, such as One Phoenix ID. Our goal is to create systematic change. We want to change systems within immigration, within police, within education. Train young people, teach them about power and how to fight back strategically. That you are not just brown, you're not just a Latino, 
you are young, you are queer, you are a woman, you are all these different identities. You're undocumented, maybe you're not, right? But it's all those identities are what actually are the type of leaders we want to push and build. Because on the ground is where we have to build power to really change this nation. It's already begun, the change has begun and it's non-stop. It can't stop now, it won't stop now. You've seen people kind of gain that strength as we become organized. And that's the most beautiful thing. If that isn't, I mean, that's the best victory we can get. The engagement of our community is, is already there. So we need to keep growing. For a really long time, we've had the numbers. There hasn't been the investments and we haven't been able to realize our power. But I think more and more, as more youth are coming, as more leaders are being built, as there's more people at the doors making that connection between our families, that power is going to continue to build and that sleeping giant will, will come. This year, the legislator tried 13 anti-immigrant laws and we're only able to pass one. We were able to defeat 12 of them. Our organizations are booming. There's young leadership, uh, people that are part of the community, that are connected to the community. Our, our movement is stronger. Our people are more empowered and ready to take on the fight. So we are definitely in a better place, but there's still a lot of work left to be done. Our fight is a long-term fight. We have to change the culture. We have to educate our communities. We have to be consistent and persistent voters. The true victory is when our communities are free from criminalization, when our communities are able to live with dignity. It's just not you anymore, right? Like there's, you have a community looking to you. Um, we have a responsibility and I think that for me that is the fuel that keeps me going is knowing that we have a responsibility. And that's a reminder that getting tired is not an option. We have to keep fighting. We have to keep fighting. You get the strength from people that wipe their tears and say, si se puede and you grab their hand and say, yes, we can, junto con ellos, for them. This is what democracy looks like. This is what democracy looks like. Female rights are under attack. What do you do? Stand up, fight back. El pueblo está en las calles, siguiendo libertad. No, boom, boom. Aquí estamos. Y no nos vamos. It's not going to matter the blue or the red. What's going to matter is that we're involved, that we're engaged in every single step of the decision-making process. And Latinos are going to be deciding voters in every step of the way. <laughs>